For most people, eating meat in moderation as part of a balanced diet can be healthy. However, too much meat, particularly red meat and processed meats high in fat, can cause uncomfortable side effects as well as long-term health risks. Well, what would happen to our bodies if we were to take the plunge and become full-on carnivorous? In this video, we will find out what happens to our bodies if we only eat meat and nothing else. But before we proceed, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon for future updates. But first, let's talk about our early history. Our earliest ancestors subsisted on plants, seeds, and nuts. What spurred them to change their diets so dramatically? The tale of how humans became such avid carnivores began 65 million years ago. The dinosaurs have just gone extinct, together with over half of Earth's species, in rainforests that carpet vast areas of the planet, among soaring trees ribboned with vines. Our next ancestor has just evolved. It's the first primate ever known, Purgatorius. It doesn't look much like you or me, or even like a chimp. Purgatorius was an accomplished tree climber and a vegan. It gave up the insect-based diet of its ancestors in favor of newly abundant fruits and flowers, carving for itself a comfortable niche high in the branches. For tens of millions of years, the descendants of Purgatorius were committed to their plant-based diets. Around 15 million years ago, they diversified a bit, adding hard seeds and nuts to their diets, but stayed true to their vegan roots. Then around 6 million years ago, Sahelanthropus chadensis entered the African primate scene. With the advent of Sahelanthropus, our lineage likely split from that of our closest cousins, the chimps and bonobos. In the language of paleoanthropology, the word hominin stands for modern humans and all the extinct species closely related to us, and Sahelanthropus was the first. A short, flat-faced, small-brained creature, it most likely walked upright on two legs. It had smaller canine teeth than its ancestors and thicker tooth enamel, which suggests that its diet required more chewing and grinding than purgatorious, like meals of fruits and flowers. Nevertheless, meat eating still hadn't caught on among our ancestors. Sagalanthropus probably ate tough, fibrous plants supplemented with seeds and nuts. Later on, the several species of Australopithecus that lived between 4 and 3 million years ago in woodlands, riverine forests, and seasonal floodplains of Africa weren't hooked on meat, either. Did Australopiths ever eat meat? It's possible. Just as modern chimps occasionally hunt colobus monkeys, our ancestors may have occasionally dined on the raw meat of small monkeys, too. It seems that our bodies had to adjust gradually, first getting hooked on seeds and nuts, which are rich in fats but poor in fiber. If our ancestors ate a lot of them, such a diet would have encouraged the growth of the small intestine, where the digestion of lipids takes place, and the shrinking of the cecum, where fibers are digested. This would have made our guts better for processing meat. A seed and nut diet could have prepared our ancestors for a carnivorous lifestyle in another way, too. It could have given them the tools for carving carcasses. Some researchers suggest that the simple stone tools used for pounding seeds and nuts could have easily been reassigned to cracking animal bones and cutting off chunks of flesh. And so, by 2.5 million years ago, our ancestors were ready for meat. They had the tools to get it and the bodies to digest it. You might get the meat sweats. If you've ever sat down to a heaping helping of meat, you may have noticed a phenomenon known as the meat sweats midway through or shortly after a large meaty meal you begin to perspire profusely. Although the meat sweats haven't been specifically studied, the mechanism behind them is well known. When you eat, your body has to exert some energy into digesting and processing that food. This is called diet-induced thermogenesis and can raise your body temperature slightly. Since protein is the most energy-intensive to digest, it can have a bigger effect on thermogenesis than, say, a plate of spaghetti or a salad. So that huge steak could eat you and cause you to sweat more as a result. You might feel tired, especially after a big meal. All the energy needed to digest a meat-heavy meal could have the added symptom of making you feel sluggish, foggy, or downright sleepy after eating. As you work to digest, your body moves blood flow to your gut to help prioritize that process. 
which means diverting it from other areas of the body, including your brain. That accounts for the grogginess that sometimes follows a large meal. However, this can also be true of unbalanced meals that are too high in carbs or fat, since they can cause insulin and blood sugar levels to spike. So your best bet for sustained energy is to include a mix of all three macronutrients. In addition, some types of meat like beef and turkey are high in tryptophan, an amino acid associated with the production of melatonin, a human hormone that regulates sleep. Your digestion might suffer from a lack of fiber. One consequence of eating too much meat is that you are likely eating fewer other foods, including whole grains and fresh produce. As a result, you might find yourself feeling bloated or suffering from either constipation or diarrhea from poor digestion. Meat contains many nutrients, but an important one it's missing is fiber, an indigestible form of carbohydrate that's crucial for digestion and blood sugar regulation. You might be dehydrated from processing all that protein. Another side effect of all the protein in a meat-rich diet is that it can take a lot of your body's water to process, leaving you dehydrated. Although protein is crucial for health, including muscle building and repair, people tend to think they need more than they actuate official recommendation for protein is only about 0.36 grams per pound of body weight for most sedentary people, and even athletes don't need more than about a gram per pound of body weight each day. Anything more than that, and your body will use more fluids to flush out the excess nitrogen, according to research. If you don't drink enough water to compensate, you may end up feeling faint, lightheaded, or otherwise unpleasant. If you're trying to lose weight, too much meat could slow your progress. High-protein diets can indeed help with weight loss goals by helping you stay full longer after your meal and providing a slight advantage to calorie burning because of thermogenesis. But if that includes animal protein, it's important to be aware that certain types of meat can be extremely calorie-dense, meaning they pack more calories per bite than other foods, like veggies for instance. Those with the most calories include fattier cuts of meat and processed products like restaurant hamburgers, bacon, ham, and sausage. So if you are trying to lose weight, opt for lean cuts of beef and poultry or fish, all of which tend to have fewer calories per serving. You could increase your risk of diseases like certain cancers and cardiovascular illness. Studies have consistently linked higher consumption of red and processed meat to increased risk of certain cancers as well as cardiovascular disease. Processed meats like ham, bacon, sausage, and hot dogs are particularly culpable because most of them are treated with chemical preservatives called nitrates. These chemicals are associated with a higher risk of colon, kidney, and stomach cancer. Research has questioned the epidemiological studies linking meat to health risks, suggesting that perhaps it's less risky than we thought. However, the lead author of that study was found to have received funding from the beef industry, and most mainstream medical experts and nutritionists continue to recommend eating meat in moderation to minimize the risk of chronic illness. And that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for future updates.